All right, guys, we're gonna do some, uh, some a video here. Got an ISF coming in. We're gonna do a radiator and do some transmission work for it. So uh, I'm gonna bring it in. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Cool down a little bit. That's fine. Yeah, that's and, fine. Yep. And then let's show y'all the parts. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna do um, all OEM stuff other than the radiator. The radiator is actually made by Koyo, which is a OEM replacement. So it's one that I recommend. I've run it before in the ISS. Koyo radiator. Got a little bit of the foams to put on, just like the OEM stuff. World standard fluid, super long life. And then we're also gonna replace the hoses. And also we have a transmission filter, gasket, and all the little stuff you need uh, to do the job. Because obviously when you're doing the uh, work on these cars and you're changing out the radiator, some of the transmission fluid comes out. So you definitely want to go ahead and just top it off, right? But um, Kobe decided to go ahead and do a full service on the transmission while we're at it. So that's what we're going to be doing. This is his personal car. Beautiful car. So, uh, well, let's let it cool down, like I said, and then we'll get started on it. This guy here has a, a brace that goes all the way down, so the bolt has to be removed from the bottom. So uh, we'll do that a little bit later once we remove all the, the plastic off the bottom, the bottom. But right now, that part is loose. All these um, wires have to be unclipped and then moved up so that way it can come out the way. This has to be out the way. This has to be out the way. So we can you know, take out all this so that we can move everything forward pull the condenser, the condenser, and the radiator all together. So there's bolts holding it here and here, and then in the bottom too, that you have to remove. Then you leave the condenser in the car, and then the radiator slides that out, and you pull out. The way I like doing this, I like to pull the radiator and the fans together, one piece, because there's not a lot of space to pull the fans out, pull the condenser out, and then try to sandwich you know, the, the radiator out between it. So just pull everything forward, pull out once, uh, once you have the space. So and there's a little bit of moving around, a lot of moving around actually, so make it all work, but, but yeah. Um, so let's keep at it.
have the RR racing, you know, it's easy to just pull the lid off. Now we have space to, to work and back and forth on that. And this can stay, that can stay there. That will just clip off back. Shrouds, allowing it to slide out. And all these things, you just put a little pressure on it and it unclips. And I started here because I mean it's still hot, it's still hot to the touch. So we're still waiting for it to cool down. Obviously, we gotta jack up the car and then get the radiator fluid out before we start taking the hoses off. You know, that wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> so, but yeah. So while we're at it, <clears throat> all the fans we're gonna just disconnect them. So um, show y'all how this works. So you have still the fan uh, motors still connected. So I'll go ahead and remove those. As you can tell, all this is loose already. And then this guy is coming kind of loose. And if you look, uh, you see that's your fan. And then, um, so yeah, we're gonna be removing that. But yes, yeah, what you're working with. All right, guys. So the that little pod messed up, but but yeah. So basically, everything is basically uh, removed back. There's a couple of little connections we got to remove. Uh, there's a the the cooling hose that goes to the AC, to the to the ECU is still connected, uh, but everything is you know, pretty much loose. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna check the car, take the fluid out, and then it'll allow everything to cool down a little bit more, and then. Um, to do that, you gotta move all your panels. So let's uh, jack up the car and go from there. guys so we're gonna remove all this plastics off of here so the main engine uh, cover needs to be removed there's a bunch of little bolts if y'all never done this before there's a bunch of little screws uh, all 10 millimeter and then so just take them out and then this will give you access to where the radiator is at which is sitting right here so I'm gonna start doing that
Okay, so now we can see the radiator under here. So that's the guy we're gonna be replacing. And this is your little valve that you can actually remove, uh, just untighten a little bit and you'll have the fluid come down here. Um, so that's your next step. You wanna let the fluid, you can do it gradually until it starts sipping and then get, a, and get all the fluid out. Um, and, uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing next. That's it guys, you don't want to go too far past it, because if you do, the fluid starts coming out from here, so you don't want that. So. That's it, just let it, let it drain out. All right, so now the fluid, basically took the hose off, all the fluid's out, so the bottom hose is taken out. So then the next thing is to take out these uh, radiator hoses, and um, basically, you know, we're gonna replace the fluid, but I like to just crimp the line a little bit with the uh, flyers are designed to crimp. And then um, there's also a bolt we gotta remove. So if you come around here, I'll show you the, there's a bolt right there. So this bolt has to be removed, and then these hoses, uh, this transmission line's kinda come off, because all of that's gonna come up. So these two hoses are gonna come off, so here, here, and then that bolt there, okay? There's also another bolt, if you come out to the front, there's a bolt here, and that's gonna hold your radiator support, the, the bracket, so that has to come off, and that will come up with the radiator support. And then there's a couple little bolts here and here that actually attach to the condenser to the radiator. We have to remove those, but normally, I either try to get them here or try to get them from the top, so, but, uh, so let me get started on that, and then uh, we'll keep going. All right, so using the tool clamp here, I'm gonna a clamp for the hoses. And we adjust here. There's obviously gonna be fluid. Um, let's go back a little bit. It's gonna be fluid in there, it's gonna come out. But. Ten millimeter on this side. And the bracket does have another one right here. We gotta remove. While we're at it, we're gonna remove this side right here. The one with the radio support.
right, man. So now we got it pretty, pretty out the way. We got one more hose to remove, and um, then we can go back to the top and start removing from there. All right, guys. So everything is uh, pretty much got the space I needed. Tie strap the two hoses, uh, the two lines for the transmission over here, out the way. Everything is uh, attached away. The hose is off, and you definitely want to take it off. That way you have more space to wiggle everything out. Um, so now, under the car, this is, you're pretty much done under here. Now you got to bring it down and uh, start, you know, just finish off the top so you can slide everything out. But, yep. So, that's what we're going to do now. Just uh, bring it down and get it, get it going. Now we're back on top of the top of the car, so this has to be complete, completely come off, okay? Now obviously your top hose and everything has to start sliding out that way and then disconnect everything. There's also a breather hose here it's attached to the to the radiator um, fan shroud that actually some of the fans blow air into the into the ECU, which uh, something you have to disconnect right over here, and you know all the connections. So let me get started on that. And then, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. And this radiator is going to replace, so, and also all these hoses, so. hose on this side. I see it from here. So that's the other hose. And then this right here will, will come off as soon as you take that one off. So catching some of this super long life coolant. And this is gonna go back with, obviously. So now we're starting to have more space. Let's take this clamp off here on the radiator. Hose back. So as y'all can see guys, there's a lot of little things you have to kind of remove. <clears throat> and in this car, it does have an air oil separator from auto racing. That guy's gonna have to come off. You definitely need all the clearance possible. So that's gonna have to come off. So let me start on that. 
and get with y'all. All right, guys, so looking a lot better. Um, I got the room now here, all the clips are off. This is basically disconnected here, and that's what you need. Everything has to push that way. I think I'm gonna have to disconnect that one too to get, get more clearance there. Um, so now also remove the bar across the bottom that attaches here. That's off. This guy, I believe he has to come off. Then this guy, you can actually pull out and you can start seeing what's under it. Okay, there's your radiator, guys. Um, so in order to, to pull it out, you have to remove the condenser, leave the condenser in the car. So bolt, bolt, and then all the way in the bottom, there's another bolt. You can catch it on camera. But it's all the way down there. You see my finger. There's one bolt there, and there's another one behind the, the cooler. So those gotta be removed. So yep, so we're gonna start on that and get back with y'all. All right guys, so everything is basically ready to go. Um, you see that most of these uh, ISFs, they get clogged up full of stuff. So a lot of times, you know, people having issues with it, not cooling good enough uh, about the track and stuff, and it's not really designed, designed for it. It's just, you know, they, over time, they, they start developing clogness from all the, the crap that they run into. So as you can tell, so uh, all the bolts are removed from the condenser except the bottom bolt. But the bottom bolts are always very pain in the butt. So there's one all the way down on the bottom over there and there's one behind the, the uh, factory transmission cooler. So the way to get that is you're gonna need something. You're gonna need a swivel and around that size, 10 millimeter, right? And that's how you get to it. And then just a lot of finagling, basically. Um, the way I got it is, the way I get it is through the, uh, the old tremation cooler line. Then you get on the bolt. Move the uh, onto place. And then the radiator has to come up a little bit on this side to give you the clearance. So at that point, now your condenser is separate from your radiator. So now the condenser will stay in the car and this slides out and comes up. This part, you're gonna have to be jerking and back and forth, getting it through to try to come up. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that gets in the way, um, but um, that, you know, you're doing it the right way, that this is the right way now. So let me get set up for that and I'll be right with you. All right guys, so this is now the part where you're just gonna have to wiggle it out, okay? So the separation between the condenser and the way I do it, I always leave the radiator frame shrouds in place. And then now we're gonna just wiggle it out. So more that way, the, the main hose, I mean the main uh, line's gotta be on this side. This is all stained, this can be kind of put back in spot. So now we're just gonna wiggle it. And then just look for your clearances. So there she is, guys, in all his glory. So this is why most ISF guys have issues at the track. Uh, not because the factory radiator is not powerful enough, but it's just because a lot of them are just have a lot of years of uh, gunk in them. So a new one will work just fine, and that's what we're doing. So now on this setup, everything, all these four bolts here, we remove it. Well, actually, it's just two bolts, and the rest of it comes out. But this assembly goes on a new one. Um, so let me uh, start doing that, and then uh, get back, back with y'all. But you, as y'all can tell, it's out of the car. Let's let's sh let's show how it is now in there, and then you can see that condenser stayed. The, the two little bolts on the bottom. That's how that's where they're at. But there's really not a lot of room to to, to get to them. But that's how she looks like. Uh, earlier, we replaced the R Racing uh, damper on that. It's a nice mod. If y'all ever want to 
you know, get a little extra power, more acceleration, actually. That's the way to go. For the money, it's just an excellent mod. So, but yep, this is where we're at. So we'll take out the, the new radiator. Um, we'll take out the new one and set it up for, and put the, put the fans on it. So we'll be back. Guys, I wanted to show y'all something. This is a genuine Koyo Rad radiator. A friend of mine just recently told me that that they do make a lot of these like copies of them, like the Koyo ones. So um, they'll say Koyo on it, but it's not really a, a Koyo radiator. It's not a Koyo Rad. So look, make sure that you get a genuine one from a reputable company that will send you, send you the, the correct stuff. And basically it's an OEM replacement made by them. Um, and it works, it works great. So when I, um, I, tend, I, I feel strongly about using a radiator that it has a transmission cooler built into it because not because of the cooling of the transmission but because of the heating of the transmission. Um, when you go to take off in the morning, you warm up the car for five, 10 minutes, you're not warming up the transmission if you don't have this. So on the R racing or whatever, the, Toyo, the Koyo radiators are aluminum that you pass this up you're not heating up the transmission at all. Sitting there in the park is not doing anything unless you have it in the drive and you're actually forcing the fluid to get hotter. So, and then when you're forcing the fluid on, on a cold transmission, you're just causing wear and tear on the transmission. So, if you're a daily guy, I would definitely recommend going OEM on this. And then if you track it, you can um, upgrade the, the transmission cooler to a little bit bigger one, but use the factory radiator unless you're a full out track car, you know what I mean? So at that, at that, that point, it doesn't matter. You go with the aluminum radiator, then you supersede this. Um, so like I was showing you all on the factory radiator, they're completely full of stuff. So once you have a radiator like this that is clean and you clean your condenser out too, it's just gonna work better uh, in air condition. Your temperature's gonna drop, it's gonna work right. So that's what I recommend. And by replacing the old cooler on the car, uh, you know, you drop temp, temps there, and then by replacing the transmission cooler, you also drop temps. So this would not be the issue. Really, the issue is the other two, you know, replacing those. If you see that you need it because you're at the track and you're pausing, the car is getting hotter, the transmission is, uh, temps are getting too hot. But if not, then you only replace the things that you need little by little. So in my case, I've used them with and without. the trim. My, my car has a coil radiator in right now, aluminum. We track it um, and I had another ISF 2010 that I replaced it with the Koyo aluminum then I went back to the factory one because um, also when you tr when you're drag racing the same thing too it doesn't the transmission doesn't get doesn't build up um, the heat that it needs um, so you're sitting there heating up the engine trying to get the temps up on the transmission before you go down the drag 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 strip because if you're trying to go down the drag strip and you're shifting at high rpms and your transmission is still cold the fluid still hasn't gotten to the viscosity level where it needs to be. You don't get the shifts like you want. It, sometimes it holds the shift, it lags back. So, um, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't work for me. So in that car, I went back to the OEM setup and then I tracked it like four or five times and I never had any issue at different tracks here in, here in Atlanta. So I, uh, I totally um, agree with the fact that you use the OEM, OEM replacement uh, radiator, a good quality one. And then, you know, do your maintenance and then go by there. Your old coolers and your transmission coolers, replace those as you see fit. But, you know, I go back with the OEM. So, but that's just my opinion, obviously. And I've had both, but that's my opinion. And there's a, definitely, there's a, a, advantages of having the Koyo one piece aluminum radiator. There's definitely advantages to it, um, but there's also disadvantages. So you have to kind of look at the whole scenario and see if the, this is right for you. With that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything together and I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, uh, guys it's easy. Uh, I le left that on there, but now you just remove these 10 milliliter bolts. I just already zipped them off, but so they just come off. These are on the top of the radiator and then it has a clip here, push back, and then it slides towards the top of the radiator. And so that's your fan assembly. Okay, that's why I choose to do it that way. It's a lot easier. So it goes in the same way. Also, your radiator from the factory has all these little foams. And uh, my guy, uh, Colby, he did buy the foam. So we're gonna foam up the, uh, the, the 
factory radiator. It'll be the, o the OEM replacement Koyo, the same type of foam. That way, it'll have the same uh, type of uh, efficiency that, that the factory one does. So, yep, with that, let me get onto that and I'll see you in a little bit. Guys, right, so we're gonna put some of this foam back. So I just follow the aluminum line. Not, you know, you don't want to be on, you know, the vents, but just the aluminum line. You follow it. Of there, then you turn it around and you sandwich it. That just keeps uh, basically when you put it, it gives it I, um, the, the clearance that you have there. Now it's supported against this, so when the air tries to flow can't flow around the radiator it flows into it so that's this whole car is designed to have the air flow through the radiator and that's why they get so clogged up because everything goes through so then yeah we put a little bit more foam on top and then that's it a lot of guys don't do this but it is something that keeps everything working uh, tip top so. I do recommend that. okay I'll get back to you there okay so the radiator is ready to go there and uh, this is a chance now to clean up this area. Because the condenser sits in front of the radiator, so if that's clogged up too, it won't allow the fins to run, air to run through. So that's basically what you do. You want to clean this condenser out real good from both sides, and then, then you're ready to go back on. Okay, so we're back on the car now. <clears throat> so you make sure all your connections are away. And just put your radiator back on. And then the same thing, you have to finagle it back into place. You might rub on stuff, just a little by little watch both, both of your corners and just go in a little by little. So make sure you remember to put your caps back on from your, um, your old radiator. You need those, the bottom ones go directly on there. So she's pretty much built back up. Everything is clean. So now we're just sliding it in. And just, you know, just be easy with it. And just keep looking. Uh, the thermostat housing gets in the way right now. That's what's hitting. Get these clamps, get this stuff here a little bit out the way. Okay. Get clear there. Just, you know, just go easy with it. Everything goes easy with it. Once it's in place, you want to take your hose and you want to go over it. Okay, so now it allows you to bring it closer. And then on the bottom, you have uh, two little guiding uh, parts that will, will go in directly. So that one's in there in there and that's in so it will feel it because when you're moving it around it has like a little finger a plastic finger and it there's a hole so it you know pop, pops in so that's what it did now it's not moving it around so now it's there so now the thing you want to do now here is look at these bolts if you want to attach your uh, your AC condenser back to it and then you're doing basically the, the whole job you did already you now you're doing you're going backwards with it so we are reassembling, and uh, so I'll uh, start doing it. And for something that I see that maybe be a, be a pointer, I'll let y'all know. But let me get to it. All right, All right guys. So now we're putting uh, the support on first. So you grab your little bolt and you attach it. And this is why you leave it loose because you want to move it around. It's easier. 
and once you have it, make sure it's lined up in the bottom somewhat. Okay. And then line up. And yeah, this this way it's you can move it around and get it to uh, to go on first without it attached. If you do the other way, it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah, so once you have the two bolts just kind of hand tight right there, then you go and put the bottom bolt on, and that one you can go ahead and tighten it up the bottom because it's basically only the one way. Once that's tight, then you can go and tighten up everything on top. So now the bottom bolt is on on the brace and it's tight. The top bolts on the brace are not tight because now you tighten up everything and then the last bolt you are you do is just tighten these guys right here so uh now it's just a you know going in and putting all your bolts 10 millimeter okay and as you can see i'm not tying them up just uh, putting them in, and then you go back and you zip them up. Okay, so those are the main ones. So now. This thing is set at 25 foot pounds, so it'll basically, sorry, 30 foot pounds. It's, it's what it needs to be anyway. Pops through there. Now there's still a hole here, but that's that's for your your ram air system. Now, once that's done, you go and you tie it up the two bolts that are on the bracket the brace. Next one. Nice. As you can see, the the foam is uh under there. Nice. She's nice and tight. Okay. So then you just move on to the next step. Be back. All right. So I put all the the main harness that goes over the top. Put it back, clip it back into place. Your fans, you want to make sure they're clipped on. As you see right here, they're all clipped on. And then also this hose that's going in um, from the from the fan shroud into the um, the ECU box. Make sure you connect that. So all that's nice and connected. Um, and then you can um, go back with this guy right here. Um, but before we do that, let's start putting on the factory hoses. I'm gonna. Go ahead and put the factory hoses in and we'll put that after because that one's easier to put on after. So we'll go ahead and put those two factory hoses and I'll get right back with y'all. Okay, so now we're going back with the, the hose. And when you buy the Toyota hoses, which I do recommend, um, they're just better. Um, a lot of the silicone ones you get from like RR Racing and stuff, they work out good, but they're really designed for like a like a like a aluminum radiator, so they're a little bit shorter. Just a little bit. They work, but they are a little bit shorter. Um, oh, these work excellent. The route on them are perfect. What I'm doing now is just putting on the clamps, obviously before, past them a little bit. Okay. Yep. So the way they work is. Pink goes towards the radiator and the yellow goes towards the engine. <clears throat> and then these are where the marks go. The yellow mark, according to Toyota, goes on this little guy. So you see there, and then the pink mark goes this little slit right there right on top. So yep, you just slide it in. So once you slide that in there, you know that it's exactly right, right? 
and then the top, this one here will be on the right place whenever you do it. that both hoses are there so, grab your clamp nice and tight it's in here if you buy the new clamps they will be uh, clamped uh, open but these were we were using these Make it a little bit smaller So yeah, that's that's that. Then you do basically the same process with the um, the other side. See, they've got the markings on them too. Uh, put in your clamps first inside, wiggle it into place, put your clamps back on, and you're good. Be back. All right, so both hoses are down. I mean on. This one is the top clamp is on. Now you go back with this guy. So. This one you don't connect, obviously. This one just kind of drains out. So you got two connections. And uh, there's also a rubber little grommet here. And that attaches to this little rubber grommet that you see down here, going into the little hole. So you basically position it in a way, you push down a little bit. And that's it on that. All you can do is pull the grommet off. And then do it the other way. Let the plastic kind of kind of guide guide you in, kind of like you did on the radiator. Grommets in. Yeah, that guy's gonna slide into there. Is. This is enough for a hole. And then you got two bolts. Slide the rubbers in, the hoses, and then you know slide your clamps on, and then you're done with that. So let me go ahead and finish that up. Be right, be back with you. All right, guys. So basically, I'm putting everything back on. Um, so just put your intake uh, back on. How you took it off. Make sure everything's lined up and straight. Uh, all the connections are on. Put back your air pole separator if you have one. In this case it was, so I put those bolts back on. So now I'm just putting back the, uh, the, um, the air box. And pretty much here, that's what I'm gonna do for now. And then I'm gonna jack up the car and, um, and then tighten up everything on the bottom. And then once everything's tightened, then I bring it back down and I finish up the top. Because obviously you gotta put the cooling and all that. So, uh, I'll get back with you. Hey guys, so now we're under the car. Gotta put the lower radiator hose on and then your transmission lines, right? And uh, so that's why, you know, you're down here. So once you do that, put your transmission lines, clip them on. Um, make sure that the transmission bracket is actually attached back, you know, the two 10 millimeter bolts and then your lines. And once you have that done, then you can go ahead and put your, uh, your cover on. Um, that way, you know, you don't have to go under here anymore. So, um, yeah, that's that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get back with you. All right, guys, so we're going to pressurize the system, uh, vacuum it out, get all the, the stuff out of it. It's a kit that I have that, I, you know, that I use, but um, not a lot of y'all are going to have it. But basically, you just add fluid in it, and then you're going to bleed it through here. Okay? So that's a bleed screw right there. You're going to add the fluid in it and let the air bleed out. If you have a system like this, then you basically... You know, you pressurize the system, well, you vacuum the system, and as you can tell, you see the hoses are all uh, 
shrunk up. If you see the hoses there, they're all shrunk. Um, like that hose right there. It's like a little shrunk up because it's, it's sucking in, sucking up all the pressure. Same thing with the bottom hose. And then you release the pressure from the, the, the tank in here. You add pressure to it. And you let fluid come out from it. Now you got fluid coming into the system. And, uh, Oh yeah. So let me get you done with this, and then I'll be back again. Okay. So I'm gonna start the car now. Make sure there's no leaks. down and, uh, and we're done so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, let me turn off the car so y'all can hear me so yeah hope you enjoyed the video if you got any questions please post uh, I'll be able to help you all um, remember that you always lose uh, transmission fluid whenever you do one of these so it's recommended to do a transmission drain and fill while you're doing it um, on this video I'm gonna stop it there but I'm also gonna make another video of how to do the drain and fill. I do have one on my channel already, but I'm gonna make one in this particular car, how to do the drain and fill, and also replacing the, the filter on it and the gasket and whatnot. So.